The information shared in this video should not be taken as financial advice, but should only be used for merely entertainment and education. But if you're the mindset that everything, this current paradigm is set up to keep you trapped in and provide you no exits out, perhaps you might want to consider this as monetary advice as to what may or may not be coming your way in the near future and how the risk all falls upon you. So today I want to take a minute, share my thoughts. And so I had a great chance to connect with a lot of interesting individuals. And so as you guys have noticed from all my prior interviews done over the last couple of weeks, they haven't been limited to those giving a alternative approach towards the concept of investing. And so it's one of those things where I don't want to limit myself to only being subject to information from the alternative media space. I try to bring you guys a variety of people from different sectors. Ideally, those that are quote unquote licensed as financial advisors, just because I think it's always good to kind of get a better understanding from some of the things that may not be quite as obvious uh, coming from me, being the fact that I don't have a license to actually share information. I just share with you things that concern me as a citizen. And so one of the things I wanted to actually point out in this video here is that the Rethinking the Dollar audience is primarily, they consist of a lot of people with, that falls within that millennial age range there. So from those that are 35 to 45-ish is the bulk of the audience, according to the analytics that I'm seeing on my side. And if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you know how I really enjoy trying to dive as deep as I can into helping people understand the mainstream narrative around the subject matter of retirement. And so I've been talking about the current retirement crisis or pension crisis for several years now. And it has a lot to do with the same information that we here use as sound financial advice in comparison to what inf information is received by people in other countries. It's all the same information. Problem is, our monetary system, as well as the fiscal issues that each cover each country has, is similar in nature, but different because we in this country have the Federal Reserve Note, which happens to be the World Reserve Currency. And so the rules of the game applies, but yet it applies in a bif different ma nature for us because we have the Reserve Currency. I don't think we're immune from the, the side effects that's happening in other countries with when their currencies go belly up, but yet... It's one of those things that we can always take this time to learn from. And so I wanted to actually title this, Millennials Should Reconsider the Narrative of What It Means to Save for Retirement. Because my personal opinion is that if you look at a couple definitions, I'm going to share those with you briefly. When you look at the concept of investing, it simply means to expend money with the expectation of achieving a profit or material result by putting it into financial schemes. So just the fact you're expending your currency into something with the idea of one day being able to withdraw something a lot greater than what you put in. And so up until this current time frame, investing was always something that was practically done because you were, in a sense, encouraged to turn over your funds to someone else and to trust that that person or that entity or that whatever was operating on your best behalf. But as we've witnessed over the last several decades, the concept of investing has become a lot more riskier to where I personally for myself, and this is where I share my personal opinions on the fact that, you know, the, the current risk that we are all exposed to due to the excessive nature of debt, deficits, as well as all the monetary intervention done by the central bank of this country here, it increases the risk. It intensifies the risk to where me personally, with my frame of thought, the risk far outweighs the potential long-term rewards. And I say that because putting funds aside now with the expectation of them growing in a healthy environment has already been erased. The current environment we're in now is no longer healthy if it's central bank induced with all this stimulus and things of that nature that's been going on for this last past 10 years of this economic expansion. And so it's been a play on words for far too long. And I want to address that in this video here because the concept of investing for your retirement, just a very just a mere fact of retirement in and of itself, it, it was an industrial age ploy led by the corporate institutions in a way to incentivize you to give your best upfront with the ability to get something returned at the end of your work career and then be able to enjoy life beyond that point. But as we're witnessing all those things break down, 
but the models and the information hasn't changed. We are no longer in the industrial age. We are now solely in a technical, computerized, digitized economy, but yet the same information applies. We went from having actual stock markets that were ran by people where there was actual human beings on the floor trading paper back and forth until a point where now everything is digital. There are no longer actual traders on floors. They're run by computer algorithms of, and things of that nature. And of course, I've talked with people before, expressed their concerns over the, 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 the triggers that can go off where a, a computer can't respond in the same way that a person would respond. So therefore, the contagion event of a sell-off could actually become problematic. And then you factor in the corporate ploy of things, where a company in the form of Studebaker happened to be the first company that was a major car company in this country that actually defaulted on their pensions. And from that point on, the pension crisis became serious. And so the corporations promise benefits until the time you die. But yet that was all in a different age, in the industrial age, when we had real markets. Fast forward now to the 21st century where everything is digital, everything is done with the hopes of propping this system up. The information still remains the same. Buy and hold, buy the dip, hold for the long term, where investing in of itself, the concept of giving your funds over to somebody else with the hopes of it growing, has also changed because as we're witnessing now, things are growing, but the valuations of these things that are growing don't really give a real sense of real corporate earnings or real corporate value being produced into society when you have all these corporate buybacks. And so if you were to use different words and just supplement the word investing, you could use the word speculate which is another play on words, which means to they simply invest in stocks, property, or other ventures in the hope of gain, but with the risk of loss. Now, wouldn't the word retirement or speculate, you know, retirement speculation be a lot better than retirement investing or retirement planning when you're simply putting funds into something, hoping for returns down the line. And then to go even further on, on a play of words, how about use the word gambling? Gambling simply according to the definition, is to take risky action in the hope of a desired result. Isn't that simply what retirement is boiled down to? You're taking risk. And the risk, unfortunately, falls upon you. And so here's one of the ways of really understanding how the concept of retirement in and of itself is flawed. It's a way of keeping your currency in a system ran by somebody else with the false illusion of the fact that it will grow throughout time not factoring in the condition of the markets, but more so the fact that because you're in the markets, you're good. But yet, once again, if all the risk is on you, a good way of understanding how much of a trap this concept is, is simply by saying, can you provide insurance on your entire portfolio? And so the fact that you cannot insure your portfolio 100% lets you know that that is one of the risk of speculating. It's one of the risk of gambling. It's no different than going out to your casino and betting on whatever your favorite game is. It's, for example, roulette. You can bet on black or red. Just roll the dice, put it out there, and the risk falls on you. You can't ensure that. And some might even say the odds of you actually being able to walk out a winner can be 50-50. And if you play the numbers, you know how to do all that stuff behind the scenes. You can probably beat the system. But for your average person, especially person viewing this if you're a millennial you have a front row seat to witness the implosion of the pension system and so if the governments and if the states and all the people who promise these payouts for life if they're having issues in this current environment what makes you think that you being a millennial if you fall in that category or if you're a lot younger what will make you think that they're going to be able to res resolve or solve this pension issue but then also, the pension issue, as it's coming to an end, because the last remaining individuals happen to fall within a baby boomer category of those expecting the promises given to them. But yet, as they witness pensions failing, they came out with another scheme called the 401k, as well as all the other financial products that they've spun people off into. And so the pension system, if it's having problems, what's the likelihood, if you're a millennial, that you're going to have an opportunity to actually experience the type of returns on your 401k in this current environment that's artificial in nature as we progress within this decade. And so if you actually search retirement crisis or whatever, I've actually watched a good series by Ryle Paul, 
who's a real vision uh, gentleman, talking about the pension situation and all the financial products that they spun out to the public as a way of keeping your currency within this system. And so the risk falls on you because you are no longer investing. The word investing, in my personal opinion, is no longer something that sums up what this current activity is. You are literally gambling. You are taking risk upon yourself and it's not insurable. And so for most things that are insurable, I actually looked it up, the PBGC as well as the FDIC, they'll insure up to $250,000. And anything above and beyond that, you're pretty much on your own. And so, of course, if you're curious to find out for yourself, just Google or type in as my insurance, as my retirement portfolio insured, and most of the things you'll come across will say it's not. So once again, is that gambling? I don't know. You tell me. Because if it was truly an opportunity for people, people to put things aside and just to have something that preserves purchasing power, you're taking much more of a risk by putting it in government bonds, which are becoming very problematic as I speak. 30-year tre yes, treasury yield, 1.5% right now, which means that the borrowing cost for the future is a lot lower. Therefore, the risk are brought closer to this current time frame of it being more advantageous for you to borrow now than to lend money to the government for 30 years. So we're going to have some consequences with, with that real soon. And if you are solely dependent upon retirement gambling, then you are going to become a person that carries all the risk upon yourself. And what does those risks equate to? You suffering a major catastrophic loss of everything that you've put aside with the expectation of it growing. You are no longer investing. You are gambling. And so if you gamble, you will become subject to all the market conditions at its fullest extent. And that includes all the gains and all the losses. And when we've been in an economy that's been artificially propped up for 10 years and we're factoring in this current health situation, which will play a major role in a negative way on all global economies as well as corporations, you put yourself at risk at losing everything that you are putting aside because once again, this current time frame will not equate to just a simple recession. In my personal opinion, and of course to a lot of people, especially the last gentleman I interviewed, he was talking about the second depression. And so a depression will be perhaps 90% loss on equities as well as your, your, your overall net worth if it's tied into this paper digital illusion that's denominated in national currencies, whatever country you're in. So I just thought I would share my, share my thoughts real quick on the concept of why I believe millennials should reconsider what they consider retirement planning because you really can't plan if you can't reassure yourself that the risks are relatively minimal. But this current environment we're in now, the risk far outweighs the rewards for me. And so the question you should ask yourself is, how much are you willing to lose by following the mainstream narrative and staying within this system within the same confines that prior generations were operated by as far as buying and holding and putting it you know, to the side in somebody else's possession, letting them manage things for you. Are you willing to carry that risk? And if you are, more power to you. But if you're not, if you are of the millennial or younger age, you should really reconsider what you consider retirement gambling and really think about becoming more proactive for yourself and realizing that this current environment with things astronomically high, it wouldn't be too unwise for you to want to just sit out a little bit, take a little skin out of the game, if not all of it, according to what you feel comfortable with losing. If you want to play the game, if you want to gamble with it, do what you must. But me personally, I can only speak on my behalf. And me personally, I would rather just sit on the sidelines, watch as a spectator, while focusing on accumulating monetary constants, which happen to be things that are on the periodic table in their rawest form, which of course for this channel here happens to be metals as as well as you know land and things of that nature. But yet, according to whatever it is you think will retain purchasing power. And so it's one thing where the stock market goes to all-time highs, but if it goes to all-time highs in a time frame where central banks are the reason why, that means the purchasing power of that same currency that drove up those markets will not be of, this, of suitable use for you as well. So your portfolio can go through the roof in nominal terms, but that means that more than likely your purchasing power for those same numbers when you go to withdraw, if you can, won't buy you much. But anyway, thought I would share my quick thoughts. What do you think? Is this the time or has the time been there all along 
for millennials or even baby boomers, if you're watching this, to reconsider the retirement gambling concept that we're a part of now. I'm curious to find out what you think. Leave a comment down below. See you later.